In this video, we're talking about my top three Fujifilm lenses for wedding photography and portraits. What's up everyone, Reggie B Photo here and welcome back to the channel. So for those of you who are new, my name is Reggie Balaceros and I am a wedding photographer and photography educator based in the San Francisco Bay Area. In this video, I'm going to share with you all my top three lenses on the Fujifilm system in the perspective of a wedding photographer and a portrait photographer. So first up is the Fujifilm 16mm f1.4. And up until recently, this lens was hands down my absolute favorite. I recently had to put together a gallery of all my top wedding photography photos for my ex-photographer gallery on the Fujifilm website. And it's no surprise that a majority of the lenses, at least more than half, were made with the 16mm 1.4 and it's just pretty much phenomenal. It's my favorite for a few specific reasons. First, it has this unique combination of optical characteristics. It has a wide field of view, a large aperture, and it also has the ability to have close focus and higher magnification at 0.21 magnification. Next, it is extremely versatile in subject matter and the situations that it delivers in. You can do environmental portraits really well with it. You can also do low light event coverage such as weddings, obviously, and other types of events. And then the lens also allows you to get up close and show emotion for intimate moments with people, couples, portraits, and that kind of thing, but still showing the background context. It still lets you know where you are as opposed to a telephoto lens that just completely obliterates it and doesn't let you know what's happening happening behind the subject in the frame. It also has really great close focusing ability to make it into almost this faux macro lens. You can isolate details, you can take photos of rings, and then at the same time you can have things in the background to kind of show the context again and it really smooths out that blurry background and having that bokeh and all that stuff. So it's really good for that. But I think the last reason and the reason why it really is my favorite lens is because it has a challenging perspective that it brings to your photography. It's a wide angle lens and it's it's more on the extreme side. It has a really not so forgiving focal length and distortion characteristic. You really have to be at the top of your game to be able to create with this lens, especially when it comes to weddings and portraits, which really isn't popular for shooting at really wide angles. If you mess up, you really do have to pay for it. It's it's something that you have to make a conscious choice to use and you really have to deliver especially when I take the risk of using it for something like a kiss shot but simply put it is a high risk high reward lens and I always find myself pushing my photographic boundaries both personally and for my clients to be able to deliver something you know really magical and I think that is why the Fujifilm 16 millimeter 1.4 is at the top of my list. So next up is the Fujifilm 23mm 1.4 and everyone knows as a wedding photographer the 35mm full frame equivalent is a gold standard when it comes to photography especially photographing on the wedding day. Shooting a wedding all day with one lens if I had to make a choice it would be the 23mm f1.4 for the Fujifilm system. Statistically um, when I really go in my Lightroom catalog and I check out all the photos that I've delivered and edited to my clients the 23mm 1.4 is at the top. It's just statistically the top performing lens as far as what I deliver to clients. So as far as kind of like return on investment, this one probably outweighs all the other lenses that I own in my kit. Like all the other requirements that I had, it's an all around performer. It has solid optics. It has the large aperture. It has the shallow depth of field ability. And you know what? It has some decent sharpness wide open, even some, you know, close focus ability, but it's not as close as a 16 millimeter 1.4, but you can, you can really do some detail work with it if you you need to. And as far as the autofocus goes, I would like to say that it's probably the faster, maybe the fastest autofocusing lens of the larger aperture primes that I own. That's what makes me rely on it when it comes to the really high pressure shots, just to make sure I get it and I, I have no excuse to deliver that photo to my client. As far as distortion goes, it is the ideal kind of distortion characteristics for a wide angle lens for portraiture. And the wider field of view really lends itself for environmental portraits. And that's pretty much one of my favorite type of portraits to shoot because when it comes to wedding photography, I want to document the place that the couple picks to have their ceremony at, to have their portraits at, in addition to the couple themselves. And because of the distortion, you can also get a little bit closer for those intimate shots without having to really worry about the extreme distortion as bad as a 16 millimeter 1.4. You know, for me, it really strikes the perfect balance of the wide field of view with minimal distortion because it has that kind of distortion characteristic that really replicates what your eye sees. So when you're working really fast and you don't really have time to scan around you can pretty much look where you need to go and just pull up the camera take the shot and it's going to be pretty much 
what it looks like in your head without having to do much pre-visualization, which is really key for really fast-paced documentary work. I would say that it really is a true storyteller's lens. It's perfect for documentary work, for candid work, and it is really the perfect complement when paired with a longer focal length on a two-body wedding photography system, especially if you pair it with the 56 millimeter 1.2, which is the 85 millimeter equivalent. And that brings me up to my next top lens, which is the Fujifilm 56 millimeter 1.2. This is really the lens that is my go-to for any type of compressed telephoto look as I personally just prefer wider angle lenses. So I'm not gonna go too long and I don't really like reaching for the 90 millimeter F2 or you know, the really heavy 50 to 140. Those are great lenses, but those are not for me. The 56 millimeter one is my top one for compressed telephoto looks. And for me, it's one of the top three lenses for my wedding photography, just because of the same reasons that any wedding photographer would use a large aperture 85 millimeter lens on the full frame system. Of course, it has the shallow depth of field. While there's more to a photo than shallow depth of field, you have to worry about the light, composition, the moment, the story, all that stuff. If you're looking for that shallow depth of field on a crop system like the Fujifilm system, this is pretty much what you need to do is you have to have a large aperture, you know, 1.2 aperture. It's a 1.2 lens. It opens up all the way there and it really does deliver. It's great for headshots. It's great for candids. It's great for close-ups. It's great for documentary work. And obviously it is great for engagement photos and wedding portraiture. And along with the 1.2, of course, you're going to get the great low light ability because it is the 1.2 aperture on a crop system. It's super good at soaking up all the available light in the situation. On a full frame, when you shoot with 1.4 or 1.8, the focus is actually not that great. So you have to stop down a little bit to like F2 or 2.8 to get some usable sharpness for that documentary work where things are moving around. But since this is crop, you can take advantage of kind of like the 1.5 like depth of field increase. But at the same same time still keep it at 1.2 so you really do get the advantage of low light but better focus and I think that is a unique aspect that a lot of people don't take into account when it comes to crop sensor systems for wedding photography. I also use the 56 millimeter 1.2 as a kind of makeshift macro lens for all my ring shots. I don't have a dedicated macro lens for my wedding photography so every type of ring shot that you've ever seen me show has been done with the 56 millimeter 1.2 and the 16 millimeter extension tube and also I really like like to do the Brenheiser method or the bokeh panorama shots in this lens the 56 is so good at doing those it's perfect for it because it doesn't have that kind of distortion that you have to worry about when stitching all these photos together the biggest negative about this lens has and always has been the autofocus so for moving subjects, especially in low light, it's terrible and it's super inconsistent. And the one thing that sucks so bad is that it hunts like crazy. It, it just kind of goes and then it locks on and then it's, it's still not accurate. So it, it's not, it hunts and it's not confident and it just doesn't get it sometimes. So it requires me to overshoot a lot in order to ensure that I at least get one keeper to deliver to my clients. And it's, it's just really frustrating in daylight. It's, it's pretty good. It's okay. But when it comes to low light, which is mostly what we're using and kind of working with in wedding photography, it is absolutely terrible and it's frustrating. And as a professional, it's not really good to have that kind of like thought in the back of your head that you might not get the shot that you need and you have to kind of overcompensate. That is why it's really kind of at the bottom of the list for me. And in general, I just always wish there was a different option that had better autofocus. And that is why it is going to be getting replaced on my top three list by none other than the new Fujifilm 50 millimeter F 1.0. Yes, 1.0. And while I don't have many wedding photography example images with it, mostly because I got the lens in December of 2020, which was the tail end of my wedding photography season, I am confident that every single shot that I shot with the 56 millimeter 1.2, the examples that I showed you, I could have done with the 50 millimeter 1.0, I promise you. And there's even a possibility that I could have done it better because the autofocus opportunities would have been increased and better at getting keepers. The same great things from the 56 millimeter 1.2 apply to the 50 millimeter f1.0. No, it's got great shallow depth of field. It's got great sharpness. It's got great low light ability. And now you add in its new and improved, more confident autofocus. And I'll be the first to admit that the autofocus is not faster than the 56 millimeter 1.2. It is more confident. It hunts less. It goes to where it needs to go and it stops. And when it stops, you can rest assured that it is accurate and it locked onto the correct thing. If you ever shot with a 56 millimeter 1.2 and you've been frustrated with it and you're professional and it just is not up to your standards, then rest assured the 50 millimeter f1.0 clears up that frustration on top of that autofocus improvement i just love the subtle and smooth rendering of that 1.0 i mean a 
again, depth of field is not everything. Bokeh is not everything, but God, it, it's it's really good and I love it. And for me, someone who went down from full frame, I, I still always had that inkling that I, I missed some of that child depth of field just because this one really kind of fills that void that I had after moving from the system. And the center sharpness for me seems better than the 56 millimeter 1.2. There's a lot of YouTubers, reviewers who say it's not as it's not better, but I think the reason why it looks better to me in the real world is because it actually hits the focus. The 56 millimeter 1.2 doesn't hit the focus. So maybe it's good at summer sharpness with a controlled test, but in the real world, the 50 millimeter F1.0 is hitting more shots. I gotta say, it's definitely creeping up there and getting up close to my top Fujifilm lens of all time next to the 16 millimeter 1.4, but the jury's still out. I'm waiting to see if it can prove itself during a full wedding season when we open back up from lockdown. The biggest negative of the lens obviously is can you stomach the cost, the weight, and the size? This lens is really for my business, so I want the best performing gear that also sparks my creativity. That's kind of what I'm looking for. And this one wins over the 56 millimeter 1.2 just from eliminating that frustration. And that kind of wraps up my top three. But before I end, I'm sure you're thinking like, oh my gosh, Reggie, you forgot to mention the super magical 35 millimeter 1.4. I get it. The 35 millimeter 1.4 is a favorite amongst a lot of you photographers, especially portrait photographers and even wedding photographers and while it's it's going to be a close runner-up really kind of close up right behind those four lenses i seldom choose that lens for wedding photography as my first go-to it's it's only a lens that i grab when i need either less distortion for a wider shot to get more straight lines or something like that for an architecture shot or when the situation is too tight for the 56 1.2 or now the 50 1.0 i mean it's it's great for details though and it i use it a lot for a lot of close focus details of jewelry shoes and that kind of thing but I don't think it merits itself kind of the award of being one of my top three lenses for wedding photography and portraits. So now it's your turn. I'm curious to see what are your top three Fujifilm lenses for you and your photography. Um, let us know down in the comments below with a couple of reasons for each lens. That way this video can serve, especially on the comment side, a great resource for someone who's new to the Fujifilm system and they can kind of look at the different type of photography that people do and what people might use. And if you want to find out more information on any of these lenses that I discussed, I've got links down to their respective review videos down in the description below as well as links to purchase them so that you can support the channel Channel at no additional cost to you. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already as I make new Fujifilm or photography videos every single week. But you know what? If that's too long, be sure to follow me on Instagram at, at @reggiebphoto as I'm always posting new tips, tricks, and tutorials like every single day. So be sure to get on that. If you don't follow me on Instagram, really, your photography is going to be lacking. I'm not even lying about that. All right, that's it for me. Remember to get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you all in the next one.